to? Oh, hello. Um, I hope I'm through to Jehovah's Witnesses. I got this number from the Charity Commission. Is that right? Uh, yes. Oh, great. Great. I'm reading one of your books, What Can the Bible Teach Us? If it's inconvenient, can I leave my name and number and you get back to me when it's convenient? Or are you able to speak now? Or um, If you want a bit of a long conversation, it might be a bit of another time. If you want just yes. quick... Quick, <laughs> quick, yes. Um, yeah, OK. Yeah, um, I don't know if my number has come up on your phone. I can I can give you that if you want to call again. Which congregation are you? Because uh, I don't know if I'm going to be near or... Uh, it's Hall Green. Hall Green, right, OK. Um, so, I mean, where are you? Oh, I'm quite some way away. I'm I'm outside of the city. Right. Yes. Um, OK, um, thank you. Um... On your book, What Can the Bible Teach Us?, which I've been reading, it says on page 33, paragraph 11, I was shocked, it says, all governments belong to Satan. And I thought, surely not my government, surely not, you know, Her Majesty, the monarch, the crown. Um, the crown is the head of the British government, and I don't believe the British government or the British crown belong to Satan. Is that what you teach? Yes. Um, if you look at Romans 13, you see that uh, the Bible teaches us that as Christians, we need to be in subjection to, as it calls it, the superior authorities, the governmental systems. So we show them honour, we pay our taxes scrupulously, etc., etc., they are allowed to exist at the present moment, mm -hmm. but human governments are all working unknowingly in the overall control of the devil. Uh, in, including so, the British government and the British crown? All, all governments, but because it, my, but my I live in the UK. Made to rule himself. I beg your pardon, sir. My, my name's Robert, by the way. I'm sorry I interrupted you. Okay. <laughs> so, I beg your pardon. Um, but would that include the British government and the British crown, which is the head of the British government? In essence, yes. Right. Because human rulership is not what God originally purposed for us. Human rulership, in essence, started when Adam and Eve decided to decide for themselves what was right and wrong. Well, I don't know how you get that from Romans 13, because Romans 13 says the complete opposite. It actually says that human government is established by God, and provided well, that the governments act in accord with God's will, uh, God's will is indicated in the Bible, you know, don't kill, don't steal, and so on. Um, government authority is actually instituted by God, and Christians are, yes, we're to... Um, be respectful to the government and we are to yeah. do the uh, comply with the laws except where those laws disagree with the commandments of God yeah so um, he, he Romans it refers to them as being a minister so they're allowed to exist at the present moment because they provide you know a, a sort of law and order um, you know, various other uh, services that help to make human society function. But you've just said that all governments belong to Satan. That's page 33 of your book. Yeah. So, <laughs> He's the one in overall control. If you take a look at First John 5 and verse 19, it explains that the whole world lying in the power of the wicked one. Um, do you think that's a contrast between those who are born of God and those who aren't born of God? In other words, it's talking about human beings, individuals, not governments. Do you think that's possible? Um, in essence, it is just the contrast between those who are doing God's will and those who are not. Well, in other words, those who are doing God's will, let me, let me just read it, because I feel if we don't read the Bible, um, we're sort of um, yeah. talking past each other, sir. 
Um, 1 John 5, 18, and we know that whoever is born of God does not sin. Well, obviously governments can't sin. And we know is first person plural. So John is identifying himself with his readers. This is written to individual Christians, not to governments. So we know that whoever is born of God does not sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. Verse 19, 1 John 5, 19, we know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. So it's got nothing to do with governments. It's simply talking about individuals who've been born of God and individuals who haven't been born of God. And the writer, John, identifies himself with the first person plural, we know, with the ones who've been born of God. So it's just a contrast between people who've been born of God and people who haven't been born of God. This isn't some proof text that every government on earth is of the devil. I can see what you're saying, mm. but as with all of the Bible, we take the whole Bible yes. and you then see the context of any particular verse within the context of the whole Bible. So, for example, um, we know that uh, in the book of Revelation, mm -hmm. we have the situation that the devil is misleading the entire inhabited earth. Where's that? Uh, that's Revelation... Um, is it 12? 12. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm just trying to find it. I forgot where it is exactly. <laughs> I know it's somewhere in 12. Yeah. I haven't got me bothered with me, have you? Sorry. <laughs> Uh, chapter 12, verse 9. So the devil was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, yeah. who deceives the whole world. He was cast to earth and his devils were cast out with him. So when it says deceives the whole world, is that a figure of speech, meaning people who don't follow God? Or does it mean every single person on earth, including every single Jehovah's Witness and the governing body? He would be out to try and deceive. No, 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 it, no, no, it doesn't say the devil tried to deceive. Let me read the verse to you. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to earth and his angels were cast out with him. And it, oh, the, the context from verse 7 is a war in heaven. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was there a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the devil was cast out. So it's a contrast between two groups of people, people who are fighting for God and people for fighting for the devil. If you take the word whole world to mean every single person on earth without exception, then that would include you and every Jehovah's Witness and the governing body, wouldn't it? If you take the whole world in that way to mean every single person. Yeah. actually relates to the world of mankind alienated from God. Right, so it doesn't mean every single person then, does it? It just means people who are following the devil. It, it does in effect, yes. And all those who are not serving Jehovah acceptably are, without knowing it in most cases, yes. under the control of the devil. So that includes the governments. Where does it say that? I mean, how? I mean, I mean, Her Majesty the Queen loves the. Anyway, uh, well, um, no, her, I, I've heard Her Majesty the Queen talk about um, Jesus's resurrection and how she she believes in Christ and follows Christ. So she wouldn't be a part of this, would she? She wouldn't be a part of the whole world that's following the devil. And there would be many Christian people in many Christian churches. I agree there is lots of heresy in many churches and liberalism. And I believe there's many people in many churches who are unsaved. But there are some people, maybe a minority, but there's some people in, in almost every church, Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, Pentecostal, um, a minority who do love Christ and who do follow Christ. I don't believe every single person in every single church is saved. I don't believe every single per person in every single church is lost. You need to base your beliefs on the Bible, you see, and this is what... Yeah, well, that's what we do. So, I mean, I'm afraid right. I can't speak any Okay, of okay. Um, right, thank you. But the, the, you've got the book. You have got the website, obviously, so, you know, you can 
research what you want to. And at the end of the day, as with us all, we have to make up our own yes. minds as to yes. what we choose to believe and do. Well, I want to obey the Bible. I want to do the will of Jehovah God. I want to obey Jehovah God and do his will. But one of your older books I got from a book dealer, Prophecy, on page 167, it says the British Empire, because it was released in 1929, this book, it says the British Empire must of necessity be of Satan's organisation. And then it says exactly the same is true concerning America, where the three elements of Satan's organisation rule the people. So it says that the British and the American nations are Satan's organisation on Prophecy, page 167, because it, it describes them as being the seventh head of the satanic wild beast of the book of Revelation. That's right. I, I, I know you believe that today, don't you? In the Daniel, Daniel Prophecy book, page 141, I think it is, says the same yeah. thing, toned down a bit. I guess the lawyers have got to the books now. Could I, could I speak some other time? What, what, what's your name, by the way? My name's, mine's Robert. Yeah, uh, it's Mac. Mac. Can I speak some other time, Mac? Uh, well, yes, you, you can. Um, I couldn't exactly say w when. <laughs> Would you like me to give you my telephone number and you call yes, me at you your convenience? That. Yeah, OK. Um, my name is Robert, Robert Skinner. Yep. And my number is 075. Um, thank you. Th thank you for your time. Um, give me a week to really look into this and to go into more depth in the scriptures that you've raised. And maybe uh, uh, we can have a more in-depth discussion in the week's time. Or you could pass my details on to somebody else who perhaps would be an expert in the book of Revelation who could help. Mm -hmm. OK. Yep. Thank, thank you. Um, I mean, uh, just on that point of Revelation, um, there is the Revelation Climax book. Uh, yes, got it. Got it, ready. Yes. That's, so, I mean, that's very good as well for explaining all of that. <laughs> that, that says that the um, Britain and America are the seventh head of the satanic wild yes. beast. It doesn't say satanic wild beast, it just says wild beast. No, um, on page right. 252 and 253. Um, but it kind of demonises the United Nations on page 254. Yep. It says the UN is the, the eighth head, which comes out of the seventh. It's the... Yep satanic wild beast um and yet the jehovah's witness organization the watchtower joined the un in 1992 you were members for nine years of the united nations you took out ngo status which i can't figure out if the un is satanic why did you join the un <laughs> i i can't figure it out well the united nations organization of course has various uh, aspects to it for example the um human rights so we have used the um, United Nations human rights part of it um, to defend our work in places like Russia and various other places uh, but that is again coming back to the fact that it is in place and at the present moment, Jehovah is allowing it to function. It does do certain good things, um, like, you know, what it does with poverty and health and all the rest of it. But at the end of the day, it is an aspect of the devil's control of the system of things. But again, all that is really explained in, in the book. So, all right. by all means, you've got it. I will pick. I will pick the book up. I have skim read it and read little bits of it in in quite detail. But I tell you what, I'll do a big study of that. Give me at least a week to look into this. Yes. Okay, Mac. Thank you. Okay. Lovely. Bye. Thank you, Mac. Bye bye.